Seen from close range, the watch doesn't look as cheap anymore. There's an engraving, Ilak al Kalp, that rings a bell somewhere. That's the well. Hi, my name is George. Ah! Oh, pardon me. You made me jump a little. Bom dia. My name is Professor Aruda. What are you doing with the well? This isn't a well. It's an antique cistern. Cistern? What's that? Holy mother. It's an underground container for rainwater. Uh, and what is it that you're doing with this cistern? I'm examining it. I can see that, but why? I am an archaeologist, and I am about to make a really important discovery. What discovery is that? Ah, oh, are you interested in history? About a year ago, I would have asked myself the same question until this thing with the Templars happened. Oh, you do seem interested in history. Do you have some time? I can tell you the whole story. Um, sure. Well, as you might have heard, Portugal was a paradise for the Templars. Besides France, it was the first European country in which the Order established itself after its foundation in Jerusalem in 1119. In 1128, Queen Teresa presented Casusure to the Order as a gift. It lay near the Crescent Front. Crescent Front? You mean the front line with the Arabs? Ah, the Moors, correct. In 1147, Teresa's son and heir, Alfonso, a Templar, conquered the Arab stronghold Lisbuna with the help of his fellow knights. Today, Lisbuna is called Lisbon. Alfonso declared Portugal's independence and became his first king. In return for the Templars' help, he gave them a stretch of land in the heart of the country where the Templars built this castle. At the time, the Order's Grand Master was a man named Gualdim Pais, sometimes known as Galdinus. Tomar became the Templar's military headquarters, so to speak. What happened then? In 1291, the last Christian bastions in the Holy Land fell, and the Europeans blamed the Templars. Trouble was at hand for the Order. And then a French spy called Eskew heard about the Templars' satanic practices from a disgraced ex-Templar and reported this news to the French king. Philip IV? Ah, you know of him? A little, but go on. Well, at the time, the accusations revolved around a mysterious graven image called... Bahomet! Huh. Are you sure you don't want to tell the rest yourself? You can skip the bit about the Bahomet part. I'm kind of familiar with that. Ah, are you also aware that the original idol is believed to be here in Tomar? That's a new one on me. I got the information from the transcripts made by the Inquisition. The idol itself was never found, but there is still an image of Baphomet within the castle. It is engraved on one of the bricks in the kitchen wall. If it were to be removed, it is said the ceiling and with it the whole building would collapse. Hmm, my mission here might be a little harder than I first expected. Back to the Templars. Well. On Friday the 13th of October 1307, Philip IV had all known Templars in France arrested. Even in Spain, where the Templars had eliminated the Arab threat, people turned against the order because they no longer needed the knight's protection. In 1308, the Spanish Templars escaped across the Tejo to Portugal and occupied the stronghold Almuror. All their treasures they took with them, and it is assumed that they were later brought here 
to Tomar. But what made the Templars think they were safe in Portugal? The Portuguese king, Dinis, hadn't forgotten what the Templars had done for his country and was still grateful. He granted them sanctuary. In fact, it was Dinis who re-established the order under another name with the elder Joao Lorenzo. They lived here as the Order of Christ and even kept their trademark, the Red Cross. But what about the cistern? A cistern? Ah, yes, the cistern. I will come to that. This cistern is far too refined to have served as a mere water butt. I believe the Templars hid something extremely important here. Wait, did he say extremely important? Maybe he's talking about the seal I'm looking for. Tell me more. Do you have any idea what it could be that they hid here? Who knows? Maybe the Templar seal that was lost when the Order was destroyed. Maybe the fifth gospel, which Christ is said to have written himself, and was believed to have been in the Templar's possession, as with the Holy Grail. The seal! The return of the Templars! Right. The time of reincarnation. The hour of revenge. The dawn of a new empire. And a single seal is supposed to do that? How could the Templars have done that, Professor? The question should be, how can they do that? Can do? Yes, George, can do. After the Templars' extermination, the seal vanished. Philip the Fair had hundreds of soldiers search for it. It was the iconic symbol of the Order. He knew what power the seal possessed, and according to the legend, still does. What power? You weren't listening, George. The power of return. Are you telling me this seal has magical powers? Oh, don't be stupid, George. The seal itself does not. But I assume it can trigger some kind of mechanism which could prove Einstein's theory of space war. I don't understand. What's Einstein got to do with this? By means of space warp, it is possible to travel into the past. And why hasn't anyone made a trip to the past yet? How do you know no one has? Are you telling me... Uh, no, no, I only wanted to show that you can never be sure, George. Remember that. Do you believe that people have traveled to the past? Uh, not yet, as there are no machines that can maintain the gravitation field. The power of the field collapses within milliseconds. So there's no need to worry, right? I didn't say that. The fact is, nowadays, there are machines that can open the gate for a short time. Only they need something to keep it open, to stabilize it. And that's where the seal comes in. How can such a tiny seal stabilize a gravitation field of this size? It's the belief of people, George. Millions of people have died for their belief in this emblem. It has developed a force stronger than the gravitational field. And thus the seal can maintain the gate. That's the mystic part of the story. So the Templars need the seal to stabilize a gravitational field and to travel into the past. But where's the sense in that? Why time of return? Listen, the gravitational field enables time travel. But only for a fixed span of time. 700 years. The penny hasn't dropped there. Think about it, George. What 700th anniversary do we have? In three days. The Battle of Paris! Exactly. The Battle of Paris. 10th October 1303. Thousands of Templars died before the city gates in an attempt to kill the French king and seize power of France. As France was the military force in Europe at the time, it is hard to imagine what today's Europe would look like if the Templars had won the battle. What now? We must stop them. The Neo Templars will try to get hold of this seal and use it to travel back 700 years, one day before the Battle of Paris. That will be the 9th of October. They will take modern weapons and reinforce the Templars' troops with their own. The battle would be won easily. Everything we know today as a modern democratic society would disappear even from our memories. At least, 
That's what I assume. No one really knows what consequences an alteration of the past would have for us. Why is it Return of the Templars, then? Now, you can't interpret that literally. What they mean is the symbolic return. The Templars' culture would return to the present by this alteration, unless we stop them. What if the seal isn't down there? Then may God help us. So what are we waiting for? Let's climb in, get that thing up here, and save the world! I don't think so. The Portuguese Ministry of Cultural Affairs has forbidden any excavations on this site. What? But why? Who knows? But the fact is, I can't go down there, and neither can you. What if you happen to doze off for a while, and a total stranger to you, say an American tourist, fell into the hole in a totally unintended and still careful way, and once down there he found... Forget it. I appreciate scientific spirit, but I will abide by the law. But we're talking about our future, Professor, and you want to go by the law? There won't be any laws to obey if we don't act now! Is there really nothing that could make you leave the hole for a minute? I'm afraid not. Damn. Can you tell me something? Sure. What role does Prince Zi Hang have in this? I have evidence that the Templars were somehow connected to the Chinese nobility. That's true. Jacques de Molay asked Prince Dorima Cha II for a hundred thousand soldiers. And if he had got them, they might have changed the course of the battle though it would still have been very close and probably bloody. He didn't get them? No. The prince doubted Molay's loyalty, and after the negotiations, he dropped the Grand Master like a hot potato. De Molay swore revenge, but it all came out differently. I assume today's Templars want to take revenge on the Chinese nobility for the treason. For treason, they feel it was. Only nobody knows exactly where the core of the old nobility is now. Okay, I'll take a look around. Sim, por favor. Although I'm filled with guilt, I s That's the old man's bag. Hello. Yes? You wouldn't give me that box of chocolates for free if I asked nicely, would you? Who do you think you are? Leave me alone if you're not buying anything. Can I pay for those chocolates by credit card? Do you have a MasterCard? No, American Express. Can't you read the sign? It says only MasterCard in cabin letters. And now you are driving away my customers with your loitering. Mister, you could be a bit more polite. Are you by any chance interested in the well over there and the workings? Not really. What's so interesting about a well? Now come on, it might hide the greatest treasure of the Knights Templar. Knights... what? Templar. Templar. Knights Templar. Didn't you pay attention in history class? Didn't you pay attention in history class? I never went to school. How long have you had this shop? Since that crazy professor over there started believing he can find some treasure down the well. But that's possible, isn't it? He won't find anything. Two weeks ago, I told him I had lost my wristwatch and asked him to keep an eye open. Did you get it back? Yes and no. I found it near the well, but now it's gone again. My god, you're not real good at taking care of your things, are you? That's not easy if you have to watch the shop all the time because some brat wants to mess about with your goods. I even cut holes in my newspapers so I can see what's going on while those thieves think I'm reading. Have you caught anyone yet? Certainly. That brat over there tried to steal a box of chocolates. I caught him and spanked his ass like in the good old times. Maybe I can find your watch. If you want to look for it, fine. I've stopped looking for it a few days ago. I'll only lose it again. A cheap looking... I found your wristwatch. Thanks!
thanks. How about a tiny finder's reward? You expect me to give you a reward? Now listen, I find your watch, sacrificing valuable moments of my short life in the process, and you won't give me a reward? Okay, okay. Here, you have a keyring. Please excuse my rudeness. Why not? Might be useful at some point. Hi, it's me. But I have already given you... Aren't you feeling like reading anymore? I don't have anything left to read. I already know this paper by heart. But what business is it of yours? Just curious. I'll be off then. And goodbye. How about reading a magazine? But that is French. Damn, that totally escaped me. Well then, I'm lucky that my mama is from Bordeaux, huh? Pardon? Just give me that and go away. The shopkeeper forgot to cut holes into the magazine. But I fear he might see my shadow when I lean over the stall to steal the chocolates. Great! I have the chocolate. Hey, you! What? Me? Yes, you. Do you have a minute? What are you doing in a place like this? I live here, sir. In the street. In the nature. You're not serious. I earn a living from polishing shoes, begging and stealing. Could you do me a favor? Do you see that professor over there? He won't let me work at the well. Could you distract him for a minute? What do I get for it? Let me think. You know I never managed to steal anything from the souvenir seller. He always seems distracted when he is reading his newspaper. But he cuts holes in it and looks through them and notices everyone who comes near. I swear to you, sir, once I tried to take a box of Berg chocolate sweetmeats, but he got me and spanked my arse. Since then, he has chased me away whenever I have come near this shop. And I think he has a reason to. Stealing isn't the right way to make a living. But I didn't have money, and I have never eaten chocolate in my life. I can understand that. A childhood without chocolate. That's unimaginable. Will you help me if I get you the chocolate? Sure. I'd be happy to, sir. A childhood without cho- Here's your chocolate. Give it to me. Who did you want me to distract? The man at the well. Okay. I will steal his bag. I'm good at that. Great. The boy has stolen the man's bag and the man has run after him. Now the well's unguarded. Hmm. It goes down about four meters. But as the inside of the well is rough, I can get my hands into the gaps and get in or out without too much trouble. Hmm. Looks like something's hidden underneath it. It's one half of a key. The Templars must have hidden the other part. But where? I can't believe it! The professor was right. The Templars were here. Forget that. It's too hard for my bare hands. The brick looks on.
Having finished off the brick with the screwdriver, the second half of the key is revealed. George Stobart, tracing the Templars again. That... Uh... Oh... Yes, that's it! Hmm... Next to the idol is a small gap. I can hardly believe my eyes! It's the seal! We've outrun the Templars! We've made it! I must tell the Professor! No, you will never get this seal! Give it to me, Professor Aruda! Now! Even though you betrayed the Order by your sudden disappearance, we will reward you. Never! George, run! Monsieur Stobart, good to see you back again. The feeling isn't mutual, to be honest. You have something that belongs to us. Oh, really? Flap, shoot the Professor, and then get Stobart. A long flight of stairs. I guess it leads outside, to safety. That's a letter from Nico. She was here. No time for explanations. Take the next plane from Paris to Beijing. Ask for Bray. He'll take you to Xi Hang. Trust me, Nicole. and I'm your captain for this flight. The weather is a bit rainy, but this will cause no delay on our flight. We are scheduled to land at Beijing Airport in approximately eight hours' time. On behalf of myself and the crew, I would like to wish you a pleasant and relaxing flight. Would you like a drink, sir? Okay. I'll wait until the lady is gone and start my exploration of the plane later. Would you like a drink, sir? Ouch! What have you done? You poured coffee all over me. Idiotic staff. And I'm even paying for this. Oh, I'm sorry. How stupid of me. Please let me clean this up. Good evening, my name is Stobart. George Stobart. Oh, my name is Bourne. Sigmund Bourne. Are you the captain? Um, not really. Just a passenger like you, I guess. If I were the captain, you could probably tell from my uniform. 
Oh, please pardon me. I lost my glasses at the airport, and I have to admit that without them, I'm rather blind. I'm lucky I got on the right plane. A can of Coke is standing on the beverage trolley. The Coke can from the trolley. Taste best. Great. I'm obviously too stupid to open a Coke can. Now I have an unopened Coke can and a useless piece of metal. Maybe there's another can in the trolley. I'm sorry, we don't have any Coke left, sir. Give me a minute here and I'll find you something else. Good evening. My name is George Stobart. Oh, hello. I'm Amanda. How are you, George? Fine, thanks. Would you mind if I talk to you for a while? Sure. I don't like flights where you only sit around and wait. Tell me something about yourself, Armando. Okay. I'm from Argentina. I work there on a construction site and in my free time I'm a bodybuilder. That's my passion. Sounds interesting. What are you doing here in France? I'm on my way to a huge contest. Boy, if I win that, I can retire. Good luck then. You know, I used to be just as muscular as you are. It's a lie, but a little bragging won't hurt anyone. Really? Well, not much left of it. <laughs> Sorry, George. Just kidding. Um, alright, let's leave it at that. See you later. Ciao. Nothing left on it. Nothing left. Not much going on here. I can't see what's in there. There's a porthole, but it's closed. Nothing left on it. The metal piece is too thick. Hey, Armando. Ah, oh, hello, George. Um, could you do me a favor? Depends on the favor. Well, I was wondering if you could bend this piece of metal. Hmm, I guess so. If you get me something to drink first, I'm so dehydrated and the stewardess isn't coming. By coincidence, I have a can of Coke. The problem is, I can't open it. Let me see. Hmm, no problem for me. Wow, you're really strong. No, I just need something to eat. I'm working on it, but can you do me my favor first? Well, then give me a piece of your metal. I've given you that already. Oh no, don't tell me you... Here it is. I seem to have sat on it. Here you go. Smells a bit like Argentine breakfast, but I'm sure you don't mind. Wow, it's already bent. Bent perfectly even. This guy seems to have well-trained buttocks. There we go. Open. <laughs> wow, what am I... I'd rather not. Uh, I don't think so. Oh no.
Um, hello. Are you enjoying the flight? Oh, uh, who are you? I lost my glasses in the airport. I'm your steward on this flight. Is there anything you need? Would you like a drink, maybe? No, thank you. What do you have? Just name it. Oh, some fruit juice will do for the moment. Sure thing. Here you go. Oh, thank you. That's just what I needed. Would you like... Oh, yes. No. That's not... Here you go. Thank you. Hmm. This fruit juice tastes different to the one I had before. It's almost a little hot in this hot. I can tell at once this guy is used to this sort of alcohol level. That rum would have reduced a normal man to tears. Oh, um, yes. That's a different flavor. Do you like it? Can you get me a bottle of that? I'd be glad to. Your fruit juice, sir. Thanks. Is this the first time you've traveled by air? No, unfortunately I've flown many times. Why unfortunately? Flying is fun, isn't it? That's what you think. But you have no idea what goes on behind the scenes in flight companies. It doesn't bear thinking about. It's frightening. What do you mean? Well, um... There are secret poisonings committed by the stewards. Authorized by the companies. You'll forgive me for not buying a story like that. Yes, it's true. I'm a dietitian, and I know when food is off or even poisoned. The most used poison is hexanol. That's pure and unrefined alcohol, and it can cause death when it is mixed into food or drink, depending on the amount, of course. The companies only put enough hexanol into the food so that it causes minor stomach aches. That means after two weeks in hospital, you're fine again, and the passenger just thinks he has eaten something that was off before the flight. Now, come on. How could the companies profit from poisoning their passengers? You must speak quietly. About four million euro. The companies have a contract with the Board of Health which awards the company four million euro compensation for every passenger falling ill during the fight. It sounds obscure, but it's the truth. It's called Contract 20. Of course the companies can't poison anyone sitting in their flights. But there is a pattern to these plots. They always happen in a four-month rhythm. What's so intriguing about it is the fact that every single passenger talks about a strange pink color that the food had when they ingested it. But before anyone could ever follow that lead, the food was gone. Maybe the food was just off. Things like that happen. That's where you're wrong. The pink coloring only occurs when the food is treated with hexanol. No other chemical creates such a reaction. What is important about it is whether it is a light or a dark pink color. If it's the light one, there is no lethal threat to life. But if it's the dark, you can say goodbye to life. Do you see behind that curtain? The stewardess is putting a little red file into the cupboard. That's it! She's only waiting for the order to use it. And when it comes, bang! It still sounds a bit unlikely. The stewardess might be doing any number of things. Just be alert. You have been warned.
I wonder what the in-flight magazine has on offer. Is your drink, sir? But I didn't order anything. Oh, your nebe in the next seat did that for you. Good evening. My name is Monsieur Bray. I felt obliged to buy you a drink as a courtesy. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't drink alcohol. Are you sure? It's really good. I'm sorry, but if you like it, feel free to drink it yourself. Ah, uh, no, no. I've had two already. As you wish, monsieur. Should I have scruples? Yes, but I take the money away. I'll have a closer look at the wallets. Prince Chan Zhang of Zihang and Christophe Bray, 18702. Prince Chan Z Let's see what else is in there. This man wanted to kill me so I don't find the boy. But if Bray is on that photograph with the prince, it means that I'm coming too late. The only thing they need now is the seal. Lucky I have it. Thank you, Stuart. Please follow me to the toilet without causing too much of a stir. Okay, but I warn you. I get claustrophobic in small rooms. You have the seal. Destroy it now. What are you talking about? I'm not a Templar. Now come on, I might have had some blows to my head in my life, but... Please don't expect me to be that stupid. I've seen your member's badge. You obviously think that only the Neo Templars have spies. So you're saying that you haven't promised your loyalty to the Templars, but you're operating against them instead? Uh, you could say that. Then who do you work for? I am employed by the French Secret Service. And what do you want from me, or the Templars? That's a long story. I've got time. You said you were claustrophobic. I am. But usually, only in old Syrian caves, with a single exit and a door mechanism buried in the wall. Wow, I have that too. Anyway, we've been investigating against the Neo Templars for more than seven years. The allegations are suspicion of mass murder, forming an illegal cult, as well as drug abuse. But so far, we haven't been successful. We couldn't prove anything. The evidence would always vanish before a trial could be set up. As that is, until we found out that your friend Nicole Collard was working against the Templars for personal reasons. We established contact with your friend. She told us you had traveled back to the US. Furthermore, she was able to provide us with valuable information about the Templars. We infiltrated her into the Order as an informer so she could find out more about them. Wait a minute. Nico told me she joined the Templars to free her uncle from the influence. Now ah, that's true. That was one of the mission objectives. Her uncle was the only contact we had to the Order. But at some point, he broke off all communication. It was helpful for us that it was her uncle. Because of this, she was ready to work for us as a spy. It worked out very well until she got the mission from the Templars to prove her loyalty. She was ordered to kill the foremost enemy of the Templars, the mayor of Paris. So what was in the papers was really true? Uh, no, she wasn't prepared to do it. She wanted to escape with her uncle and the evidence, but somehow she was discovered. She had to leave her uncle behind, but she managed to get her some good evidence on them. One piece of evidence she produced was the lead about the time travel. You have been busy to follow. Anyway, your girlfriend recommended we ask for your help in this matter. However, at the time, Miss Collard was already being watched around the clock. So we had to think of something. We made her disappear for a couple of days. What's more, we sent a message to you, saying your girlfriend had died. Since the Templars were intercepting her mail, they believed she was dead and called off their observation. 
Although this may have deceived you as well, Monsieur Stobart, it served its purpose because, thank God, it made you come to us without the Templars noticing, or at least, they didn't notice right away. When you arrived and the Templars had stopped tracking your friend, we allowed her to return to her old life. Of course, she couldn't tell you anything about our plans, because if the Templars had caught you, which they did, they could have tortured everything out of you. That would have destroyed all our efforts. Where's Nico now? I'll come to that. Nevertheless, we always had an eye on you. We couldn't protect you from being captured, but I was there all the time. For example, in the derailed underground you, Khan, and Miss Collard were in. We bribed the technicians and the train driver to make the train derail in a controlled manner and give you a chance to escape. Hey, we could have died. No, no, that's not true. The train was going about 14 miles an hour. That is enough to be shaken, certainly, but it's much too slow to cause any serious harm. When our men were trying to get you three out of there, we couldn't find you. Only Khan and Miss Collar were there, and no trace of you. The train wasn't that big, you know. We didn't have much time. Ah. It was a relief when we found out that you had the seal. But why did you want to kill me earlier? I couldn't run the risk of you meeting the boy. Huh? Does Nika know that you wanted to kill me? And why shouldn't I protect the prince from the Templars? I admit that Miss Collard didn't know about our plans to kill you. She wouldn't have agreed. She loves you, you know. We don't want you to reach the prince because he is conspiring with the Templars. He would probably have had you killed after you had given him the seal. I don't understand anything. I was told that the prince's family betrayed the Templars. Why should the prince help his arch nemesis by killing someone who's trying to fight them? That's true. The Asian nobility betrayed the Templars. But that is the reason why the prince is conspiring with them now. Reconciliation. Only his closest confidants know about it. Even his bodyguards thought the Templars were intending to kill the prince. One of them was on your train. But this meeting won't happen without the seal, will it? Right. But there is some kind of a replacement seal the Templars are looking for now. They don't necessarily need yours. And where's that replacement seal? According to our latest information, it is in China as well. In a city called Wuhan. That's the place where a so-called tourist group is digging for dinosaur bones. The Templars? That's what we think. One thing. Why do you have a picture of the prince? How do you think I know the prince is conspiring with the Templars? I was one of his closest confidants. What are we going to do now? Uh, we'll talk about that in China. You'll meet Miss Collard and Khan there. My colleagues have taken them there. Okay, Redneck. From now on, we'll work together. Take arms. All right, George. We don't have much time left. In three hours, the ceremony takes place. So you still assume the Templars have the second seal? Monsieur Khan, I don't just assume it. I know it. But what's the use of this seal here? Precaution. If one seal breaks, there would still be a second one. You must know, Georges, that the Templars acted in a very careful and meticulous way. What are we going to do? I have some plastic explosives. We have to get close to the gate, attach the explosives, and get out as quickly as possible. I see. We just trudge in there, say hello, leave the explosives, and walk out again? Close. But we'll need a decoy. Oh, no. Yes. That's why you come in. Oh, great. What do you want me to do? Okay, Monsieur Stobart. You know what you must do? Yeah. While I'm distracting the Neo-Templars... You sneak past them and fix the explosives to the gate. Exactly. Khan, you take the detonator. If we haven't returned in the next 15 minutes, you push the button. No. Don't worry, Nico. We'll be out of there in time. Trust me. George, I don't want to lose you. 
I love you. Now don't get sentimental or I'll start crying. George, let's go. <laughs> wow. We've been a you mi No, George. Better to call me savior of the world. You'll get us killed. You're insane. What's happened to your cool and superior behavior, Senor Stobart? I tend to get a little nervous when I'm facing people with an extreme form of megalomania. I'd like to have this seal now, Senor Stobart. But you already have it. Don't be a fool. To open the door, I need more than just the one I have. For generations, the Templar possessed only one seal. Even though the legend talks about two seals. Pardon? Well, I used you for my purposes. When you entered the game, we had the chance to discover the second seal. Unfortunately, you came to the excavation site when I was about to take the Holy Cross. So, what you told me at the wall were lies? Not at all. Everything I told you was true. Apart from the fact that there exist two seals, and that both are needed to carry out the ceremony. And why did you feign your own death? We thought we could play around with you a little. Your research has been very enlightening and amusing at the same time. And now you're here. Incredible! And now, George. I'd like to have the second seal. I don't know what it is, but something tells me I should pick... I grind the seal with the rock until it's pointed and sharp. We've... But... It... Last time the Templars try to take over the world. I need a cigarette. Ray, what are your plans for the future? The work. This is a new case in Guatemala. Drug smugglers. How about the two of you? George and I will meet old friends. Huh? Pearl and Dwayne. I met them in York. You're not serious, are you? Oh, yes. George will visit them. If you say so, honey. And after that? After that, we'll be in the Bahamas for a couple of weeks. Hopefully without any adventures. 